Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to look at a past exam question on reproductive strategies. I know this is a topic that we always sort of avoid because we feel like it's not a lot of marks. And what I've noticed more regularly in the most recent final papers is that these kinds of questions are no longer just straightforward identify the type of um, strategy they're making it a little more application and that is why I have selected this particular question this is a medium level question um, it actually could be even labeled as easy if you know your reproductive strategies very very well then you'll find this question easy but for those of us who are uncertain as to how to apply reproductive strategies to a situation like this one we might find that this one is a little more challenging now if you are new here don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday if you are in grade 12 and you're looking for extra help, you should think about getting my study guide. It is available on missangler.co.za and it really is a fantastic resource for studying. It makes everything so simple. There are summaries. I also tell you how to solve certain problems in genetics and in DNA and evolution. So you should go check that out. So let's get into the question, starting off with the paragraph. It says, anchovy is the type of fish found in the Pacific Ocean. During the breeding season, females and males gather in large groups and release ova and semen into the water. Already you should be envisioning um, like external fertilization. It says, once fertilized, the eggs float in the water and embryonic development occurs until hatching. The northern pike fish, so this is now a different fish, is found mainly in rivers. During the breeding season, the female releases thousands of ova and the male releases semen all around the female. Again, external fertilization. The fertilized eggs attach to vegetation near the riverbed where embryonic development occurs until hatching. The graph below shows the survival rate of both fish. Now, this is another reason why I selected this particular question is, yes, it is about reproductive strategies and improving survival rate. But if you have a little bit of your um, natural selection um, knowledge in the back of your head, this will also make this particular um, question a little bit easier. So it says survival rate of the fresh embryos over 50 days, and they actually just have graph X and Y. They don't actually tell you which species is which. Now, I'm hoping that you would be able to guess already which one is which based off the information provided here. Now, they both have anchovy and the northern pikefish. They both have external fertilization, right? But... There's a, 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 a key difference between the two. And the one is for anchovies, their eggs, they just float. Whereas in our northern pikefish, they attach to vegetation. Now, I'm hoping that you're thinking, okay, which one would probably improve survival? I'm hoping that you're already thinking vegetation. Because if eggs attach to vegetation, they're more stable. They're less likely to be lost and washed away. And it means it gives them a, a bigger chance of surviving until hatching. So for now, I'm going to think that according to the graph, if I look at it here, we've got graph X, which has the higher survival rate. I'm going to put that as the northern pike fish. And for now, I'm going to put graph Y, which has the lower survival rate. I'm going to put that up here with my anchovies. But let's have a look at our questions now. So number one says, name the type of fertilization that takes place in both species. We already mentioned it earlier. It is going to be external. And we know that because they lay large amounts of eggs and then semen is spread over them. So there's no like intercourse happening. For our second question, it says, explain why both fish species are oviparous. And that is for two marks. Now, we now need to actually know what the word oviparous means. And remember the word explain, which is a question word, requires a statement and then a reason. That means you're going to have to give a statement about why it's oviparous and then elaborate further in your reasoning. 
So what does that answer look like? Well, my statement is, first of all, that they lay eggs. Or you could say that there is embryo development um, inside of an egg. But most importantly, the second thing that makes this oviparous is not just that there is an egg, because remember, ovovipary also has an egg. Oviparous eggs are eggs, but most importantly, they are lay outside of the female's body. Remember, ovovipary um, is when you have eggs that stay inside the female. So first statement, they lay eggs or they have embryos that develop in an egg. And that is laid or they lay those eggs outside of the female body. Moving on to our next question, it says describe two ways in which the chances of fertilization are increased in the northern pike fish. So this is a lovely question too. It's also for two marks and it is a describe question which means what you're going to do is very similarly to explain, you can give a statement and a reason, but generally describe questions require you to, as the word suggests, describe what you are talking about. Now, if we have a look at one of our first um, reasons, we are going to then bring our attention to the fact that it says during the breeding season, the female releases thousands of eggs. Okay, so that's going to be our first point. And remember, this question is focusing on fertilization. Okay, we're not going to mention the vegetation because that would be after fertilization. This question is saying, how am I improving fertilization? Like, what am, how am I improving the chances? And I'm improving by having thousands of eggs because that is going to increase the, the chances of being um, fertilized. Now, the second thing it mentions in this paragraph is it says, and it's a slightly different word, and you want to read very carefully, it says it releases thousands of ova, and the male releases semen all around the female. And this is important because what it means is um, you're trying to put the semen in close proximity to the eggs. In the first one, in the anchovy example, it just says that the females and males gather in large groups and they just, they just release everything. But it doesn't mean that the males are trying to get as close as possible to the females. However, in the northern pike example, this one over here, they do actually mention that the males go in and around and be as close as possible to the females. So having all the semen around the female will improve the chances of fertilization. In our next question, it says, which graph, X or Y, represents the survival rate of the northern pikefish, which, to be honest, we've already selected as being X. But now you have to substantiate your answer in number five by explaining it. And this now links into whether or not you can determine who is the better survivor. Now, we've actually just established that the northern pike is the better survivor. And remember, in an explain question, we're always going to give a statement, and then we're going to follow it up with a reason. So our statement is going to be that our more embryos survive. And why do more embryos survive? That can now link into the vegetation, because the embryos attach to vegetation and that will increase their survival because they won't get washed away. Now here is the memo for you to reference if you want to have a look at some alternative answers. In the final one there is a third option as well that you can give speaking about not being washed away or being eaten by predators if it's attached to vegetation. Um, but this is pretty much a straightforward question, as you can see here. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, everybody. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.